Make a mess of it. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you had an amazing week as usual. Now, I'm jumping straight into this. We're actually in the middle of filming another video with a VIP who's hiding in the back there. But mm -hmm. while he's doing some important work, I have Adam Reed of Tarty Bikes fame. And there's been a video which we kind of alluded to, um, or I alluded to when I built the fat bike video, and you guys have been asking for it so much, and that is how to modify a Hope Hub to give more engagement points. Now, Adam is gonna be doing the handiwork because to be fair, I, I don't quite trust myself to do this myself. <laughs> uh, so that's why it's taken so long to do this video because we needed to kind of have our schedules lined up. Uh, there are some disclaimers, don't do this at home. Um, I, that's it. Really? I think that's about it. Yeah. You, do you guys offer this service? No. Mainly because the way that it works. I thought need, that was going to be a no, but. <laughs> well, the, the reason the way it works is you're reducing the amount of poles that contact. Yeah. So you really need steel for your body, which pretty much all hubs don't have. The cross country hubs have got the aluminium for your bodies. Yeah. So you're going from, a contact, from four poles contacting at once down to two. And it's not so much the where the poles contact the ratchet. It's where the poles sit into the free body. So by halving the amount of poles, you're doubling the amount of load, and that yeah. will double the speed of wear of the free up. So, so we may look into selling individual poles pre-shortened in future, but it will be very much, this is at your own risk, and yeah. etc. So it's a bit of a, gray, think, bit of a gray area. So. I think that's one thing that we need to get this clear from the start. I think so many people assume that you can do this to any Hope Hub, but no, you can't, like Adam said. You do need a steel free hub body for this, just so it can take basically double the load that yeah. the hope will If you've got like a really light or small rider, fair enough. Like I've got an old Pro 2 from 2011 really? that I did this to. Yeah. And I used it for a few years myself, and now my partner's got the bike. Yeah. She doesn't ride quite as hard as I would, and then it works just fine. Mm. Um, cool. But I wouldn't recommend it for your average 30 bloke on an e bike, for example, yeah. you know. Well, with some information and disclaimers out of the way. I think we'll go. let's show you how to do something we don't recommend you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go in the warehouse and get some bits out. Um, get your bits out? Get my bits out, yeah. Um, Where are we going to do this? Uh, I'll probably go back in the, back in the office because it's nice and warm in there. But I'm just going to get a, a hope hub so we can see how it works and why it works, first of all. Another opportunity, look at the range of products you can get from Tarty Bikes if you want to kit out your trials bike. Or other bikes. Or other bikes, indeed. You are known as a trial supplier, but you can supply mountain bike parts as yeah, well. Yeah, we keep quite a lot of hope stuff on the shelf, like all the colour widgets for like Tech 3 levers and rotors and bore caps and spares, like seal kits are really handy. Tides Bikes, you guys have accounts with the major suppliers? Like yeah. Madison, yeah. Hot, Hotline? Hotlines, so. Saddleback, Fishers, so Madison. You have to Hope. correct me if I'm wrong. If someone wanted a mountain bike part, you can order it in for them? A lot of the time, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it may not be faster or cheaper than buying it from another shop who specializes in that stuff or has it in, you know, off the shelf. Um, but usually, yeah, we can get, get stuff like that. It's no, no trouble at all. Consider it, folks. Support a cool <laughs> shop. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just noticed that we've got a bunch of bikes here which don't look like trials bikes. So I just asked Adam what's going on here. And he's actually he's potentially quite interesting, a little promo perhaps. So yeah. Adam, what are these bikes about? So these are, we call them refugee bikes. So work with um, an organization that helps supply bikes to refugees because they, when they come over, they, they're given 36 pounds a week to live on. Mm -hmm. So if they can get around, that is a huge cost saving. Even the bus is like 10% of, of your weekly income yeah, <laughs> just to get crazy. a bus trip. So yeah. basically people donate bikes, we make sure they still work and then they get given out to refugees. So I'm doing a little, a little ride, I think it's Tuesday, 24th of May from around this area from Brin School, so it's not, not far from Preston and Chorley. Um, the idea is to find yourself a knackered or bike, at maximum expected cost 15, 20 quid, come and do a mountain bike ride with us. Yeah. And then I'll collect the bikes up at the end, fettle them and give them to refugees. So I have my, I have my Apollo Vortis here, <laughs> which I'll be uh, seeing the, the trails of Darwin Tower. Oh, uh, is that your May. bike of choice? It is, yeah, that's my bike of choice for the, for the ride. <laughs> So about six, six o'clock on uh, Tuesday, the 24th of May, if you fancy fancy coming along, um, feel free to send us a message at, at Tarty if you want to wanna join and get to any some more details, but it should be a lot of fun and I'm hoping it will sort of give us a bit more of appreciation for how good modern mountain bikes are because 
you know, riding that is sort of not sort of looking forward to it, sort of not. It's going to be yeah. interesting. <laughs> uh, but once you get back on your, your 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 normal bike, I think some things will feel quite quite different. Cool. If I can get some information off Adam, we'll put a, a link or something down at the bottom. Just messing about with an old school bike there. See so you're struggling away with this. Do you need a hand? Yeah, uh, can you get a door, please? That'll be very good. I'm not sure I'm going to have the power to get it on the laptop. You don't make them like they used to. Oh dear. Having some handy tools makes a big difference. Hub to <laughs> yeah, no, no faffing with bashing stuff and breaking your fingers. So, okay, so these little lumps of steel are your poles, and underneath them is a leaf spring. So as you push the pole down, it, it adds tension to the spring, and it wants to flip back up. So as the hub goes round, the poles and springs, as they flick back, that's what the clicking noise is in the hub and the poles engage into these teeth on the ratchet you see they're like a ramp shape yeah. so as, you, as you're freewheeling the poles are going that way and then when you pedal the poles engage into the flat surface to, to drive you forward basically so on this Hope Hub this is the this is actually the trials version so they've done something a bit funky with this one but on a normal cross country version of the Hope Hub the freer body is aluminium and all of these four poles are phased in time. So you've got 44 teeth in the ratchet and all four poles engage at once. So for every revolution of the free hub, you get 44 clicks. Yeah. So what we did with the hub for your fat bike, if you imagine these, the, the gap between each tooth on the ratchet is, is three millimeters. Yeah. We shortened two of the poles by one and a half millimeters. Yeah. So what happens when the free hub rotates backwards, to engage, then to engage, then to engage, then to engage. So you get twice as many engagement points. Cool. So it's quite simple really. Being... It's really simple. Yeah, yeah. Um, and having less than three or four poles engaging at once is quite a common thing now. Um, the Industry 9 hub that you use, for example, and I've got one of my bike, yeah. is the six poles individually engaging into a 115 tooth ratchet so it's almost like a really really fine teeth yeah um, and they engage one at a time that's how you get 690 engagements um, but yeah so it's, just, it's a similar similar principle with the hope pubs it's just 40, 44 while it's very reliable for trousy type stuff it's not really enough so you mentioned earlier that when you double the engagement points you basically only two poles are engaging at a time so that doubles the power that's well doubles the okay. force doubles the force yeah. that's going in so yeah. this is why we need to steal free hub body yeah exactly yeah because if we take if we take one of these poles out all of your pedaling torque is going through this surface and it's trying to compress that area there yeah. so over time on the trial subs you sometimes do see this pole seat kind of migrates that way slightly because of the force yeah so if you've got an aluminium free hub body and then you double in the load, normally shared over four poles, and you, you do this modification and you end up with only engaging two poles, you're doubling the amount of load at that point. So it does reduce the lifespan of the hub quite a lot. Yeah. So just a quick demo to show the, how the poles work, so that this is, as you're sort of freewheeling along, running backwards, the poles click back into the seats there, which you can probably see. And then as you drive, the poles engage. And this hub is a normal XD um, aluminium driver, so all four poles are engaging at once. So you can see going from there, the poles engaged at this point around here somewhere, yeah. to there, that's one click. So we've got 44 engagements as that goes around. If we swap this, what the trials wants to do is making use of having the steel free hub actually offset the poles so two and two engage at once and that's why where I kind of got the idea from being able to modify a cross country up to twice as many poles uh, twice as many engagements so if you watch this port here as it comes around if you can get focused on there there's, there'll be a, another click as it gets halfway and that's the other two poles engaging yeah. and then 
the next two engage. So using that principle on a cross country hub to get twice as many engagements. Cool. Right, so just taking two of the poles out of the hub and giving them a little clean up. I mentioned before about the teeth of the ratchet being three millimeters long. I think that's right. I'm just double check it before we go and take a grinder to this. It's a bit tricky to measure, but you can get a pretty good idea. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm pretty sure it's three mil. So the poles measure the overall length to start with. The way I usually do it is to put them in the calipers and then move the pole around to make the calipers open up because that gives you the maximum length. Mm -hmm. They start at 12. So if we go down to 10 and a half on two of them, in theory they should engage perfectly offset. This is our bit though because this, this bit, I've not got a jig or anything and just, you just do it by eye with a grinder. So Yeah, <laughs> this is why I waited because I trust you more than I trust me. <laughs> Back to the tinkering space. You may remember this from the rope spoke video. So you'd rather do that with a angle grinder rather than like a bench grinder? Or yeah, I, I find that I can't get accurately enough to, ho to hold it like in there. It's really awkward. I think maybe if I made some sort of jig where you could push it right into the corner, it would, it would do it. Yeah. And have the, have the right kind of ramp angle. Because the end of the, maybe how to the end of the pole is, is obviously a slight ramp. This, this face here. Yeah. In order to match the, the tooth of the ratchet when it's poking upwards. Yeah. So to get the, the ramp angle right at the same time as getting the right length and getting it straight is really yeah. difficult. Okay. Um, I'm kind of one of those weird people who likes to do things with, with handheld tools for some reason. So what I'll normally do is just cut the end in with a marker pen. You can set your calipers to one and a half mil and then you can scribe a line so you know where to work to. Obviously it's very, very faint, but you can see it in in real life so you don't end up going too far and then do a bit do that same technique with rotating the pole in the jaws to oh, check the okay. length and then see how we go is that a sanding or a grinding disc or? got a, a yeah flat disc or sanding disc on there um i just find you get a better finish and it's a bit more easy to control yeah um a little less aggressive perhaps. yeah a little bit less aggressive yeah so you should rest it on a bench and then you've got like a a solid a solid area to work from Let that one cool down, do the next one. Right, see where we're up to. 11 mil on that one. 10.95, so a wee bit more. Might be a bit iterative now because of the the, uh, it's hard to scratch a half a mil line and the marker pen's also worn off, it got a bit burnt, so. There's not really much pressure going on there, it's just a little tickle and yeah. then you can get a more accurate result rather than really hacking at it. Check they look about the same in terms of angle as well. Put them on the on the paper, then you can see them easier. Looking pretty good. So if you get down to that sort of number, ten point six. If the other one is the same, I'd probably just leave it, call it call it a day at that. Yeah. I think having them as close to each other in terms of length is more important than being exactly ten and a half. If you're gonna if you ever, if you are gonna try and do this, so ten point eight. Then I'll take a bit more off that one. I think that was a bit conservative, but we'll see. That's not too bad. So 10.62 and 10.61 was it, I think it was. There we go. So that'll do, that'll do nicely. That'll do, pig. That'll do, pig. <laughs> so you can take a little bit of sandpaper 
Obviously we've been grinding and there's usually a little tiny burr on the top of the port there. Mm -hmm. We're just going to run the sandpaper out of the sandpaper to get rid of that. Just on this, this top edge here. You can just feel it with your finger now. So we're obviously doing a very specific hope modification here. You also do another hope modification, which we so happen to have uh, here. Yes. <laughs> that, yeah, hope hubs come in mountain bike sizes, don't they? But yeah. what happens if you have a trials bike or a BMX perhaps, yeah. wink, wink, um, <laughs> that has a narrower spacing. Yeah. Um, you, 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 you get lazy. You can get lazy and make <laughs> yeah. it fit, can't you? Yeah, so this is, was a 135 spaced hope trials hub. Um, so we've got a modification service where basically you machine down close to 20 mil all off the drive side so the, the disc mount remains in the right place for the rear of a 20 inch bike and then you can see that if you look from the top the freer body originally this size gets chopped right down to to not a lot um, to enable us to get the, the, the hub down to about 116 mil spacing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously with the big chunky bolts, you don't need any chain tensions. You literally just put the wheel in, tighten it up, and it's, it's, it's sound and it's solid. Um, the sprocket's held on with a little snap ring. So we machine, it's hard to see, but we machine a groove into the freer body. And it's just like a, a C-shaped ring that goes all the way around, kind of from yes. one point round, and you can fit it with, with by hand and pop it off with a flat screwdriver so it's actually easier than a cassette lock ring as well okay. but it just saves all that space um, and that's the only way we found we could get it to work um, we've done done a few of these for various customers now and they always you know they work they work great um, really probably really quite loud yeah because one of the other modifications that this hub has that your fat bike hub has is double poles as well and maybe another hub I might have oh yeah oh yeah the other one yeah yeah forgot about that um, so we're talking about modifying a hub to fit a trials bike and also BMX so maybe there's a hint for a future build that I might be having. It's not a 20s trials bike, let's put it that way. <laughs> so you're saying that hub was a bit louder than normal. Why is it louder than normal, Adam? Why is it louder than normal, Ali? Yeah, and we've got, we've got doubles, doubles, double up springs. So as we saw before in the little clip, the, the poles are forced back into the ratchet by the spring and that's what causes the, that causes the little clicking noise. Mm -hmm. If you put double the amount of springs in, they're obviously forced back with double the amount of force and they're louder. Again, it's not ideal for the longevity because there's more friction in the system. But if you want a hub that engages more accurately, it isn't really when, you, when a hub skips, it's usually because the a, a, a pole has kind of just caught the edge of a ratchet tooth rather than getting right into the face of it. Yeah. So that with, with the double springs pushing the poles back with more force, it's less likely to catch the edge. So the engagement is more sort of positive and accurate. The downside is you've got more drag. The downside or the upside, depending on how you look at it, is that you've got a lot more noise, but you've also got more wear. Um, so again, can't, re can't recommend it, but it's something that I've been messing about with for years and it works really good if you want the hub to engage as well as possible every time. And some people really like right, really like and really loud as well. So yeah, they do. <laughs> a bonus. So what you can do is literally buy another set of the Hope Springs and they're kind of like a question mark sort of shape. You can literally just squeeze one and close it up slightly with your fingers yep. and poke it inside. Oh, greasy fingers. Poke it inside the other one. Which I can't do because my fingers are so greasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there we go. So now we have a double thickness spring. So to put the to put these back in again, the easiest way I find is to put you put the spring in first, and I would usually always move the spring so it's halfway across the seat, so it's in the centre. So you're going to get them an even force on the pole, and then you just push the spring down by hand and then because the spring's halfway you have got a bit of space to drop the pole in and it'll stay in place by itself and then you can just get a flat blade screwdriver or something similar which I've seen to have lost there is and then all you need to do to get the pole in place is push the spring down and push the pole in and I'm going to mess about with like Easy. fiddling and what have you yeah. but now you can feel that if you push it's hard for you to convey in a video but if you push with that one the amount of force required is yeah. very different to, oh, right, to that yeah. one. 
Um, yeah, it needs some feel-o vision. Yeah. Feel-o vision, feel on it. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just chuck a second spring on this one as well. And obviously this is completely reversible, you know, if you if you buy some more poles, for example, and cut them down, and some more springs, you can just take them back out again yeah. and replace them with the old ones. So we're using an aluminium free hub body as an example here, but yeah. this would normally be done on steel. The good thing is you don't need to modify the free hub body at all, so... No. No, yeah, it's just a like few minutes said, work. Completely reversible. It's going to double up all the springs so you get an idea of the, of the sound because obviously we've had a, a few clips of the of the free up in your videos and also just on the bench now. But when we put the um, double springs in, it will sound noticeably different. Also, a little sort of semi tip if, if your brain's as useless as mine only take one pole out at a time because then you know which way around they go. <laughs> I have done it before, I've put the, the poles and the springs in the wrong way around <laughs> and then it doesn't engage at all. I may have done that as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to hear you say you've yeah. done that. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're just on a quick one here, but normally you would make sure there's plenty of grease between the base of the pole and the free up, because obviously there's a lot of load there and you need to be run smoothly. And also I find sometimes it's missed is grease between the top of the spring and the underside of the pole mm -hmm. because as the pole moves through its cycle it does actually s slide slightly so if you if you leave that that interface dry it will increase the wear on the spring and the springs are more likely to break so it does give you more wear life out of the hub just by having plenty of grease under there as well um. and yeah so pop this back on air hopefully everything will work and we might won't right, so straight away that's, that's really loud yeah uh, which some people love it some people don't but it, you know, it's loud. Um, one thing I want to check is that the poles engage in time. So obviously the two that are, are completely standard yeah. should engage together. The two that you've modified, providing they've been cut down to the same length, they should engage at the same time. So we're looking for the two ticks of the two poles to come completely simultaneously. There's usually a tiny bit of difference. We're talking like fractions of a degree. Yeah. But in theory, they should engage exactly the same time. So we'll see how we're going. And one afternoon, I walked past that's, that's the modified ones, and they've gone together exactly the same, which is good. And here comes the original ones. Exactly the same. So, yeah, two ticks. Two ticks. Two ticks. Two ticks. Spot on. Double the engagement on the hub. Yeah. Perfect. There we go. We've got some old bits of aluminium tube that we've turned down to make the right size uh, preparing presses, but you can use um, sockets from like a socket set. Like some, you know, we've got various different sizes of these, um, as long as it's the right size to touch the outer edge of the bearing mm -hmm. and not too big to get stuck in the bearing seat, yeah. then you're good to go. Um, hope do that the manufacturer sets as well that you can buy. Um, it just makes things a lot easier. I mean, you, you know, even if you've got only got a, a hammer, a hammer or whatever or a vice, you can do it with these. Quite, quite nicely. Obviously, it presses, makes things much easier. And then the. Uh, this is this one, isn't it? Right, so. Hardest bit on these hubs is to get the seal to seat, I find. Right, try that one. That's, that's an MX5 from brake piston. <laughs> In theory. Speaking of MX5s, my MX5 is for sale. Is it not sold yet? No. no. I thought it would have gone by now. No. Hit me up. <laughs> There we go. Oh, nice. So there you go everyone, that is the video I hope you were waiting for. <laughs> I certainly had enough requests for it. Like I said, it doesn't work on every single Hope Hub. Uh, there are loads of disclaimers here, do this at your own risk. If you're grinding down poles, obviously you need them to be accurate, you can damage your hub doing this. Hope probably won't recommend doing this themselves and we don't recommend doing this. It's just, it is something that can be done if you're careful. Do you want to do a giveaway? Are we? Oh yeah. Oh, well, there's we a thing. <laughs> this, we didn't plan this. <laughs> we'll just do a giveaway of two cut down poles and a set of spring, a set of springs. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Very quick brainstorming then, but we're going to give these modified poles away. You can do whatever you want with them. You can put them on your shelf. You can put them in a hub. We and don't. Four springs as well. And four springs as well. Can't we bonus. don't. We don't mind. The way to enter is write a comment down below. If this was a product which we were selling, what would the slogan be for the product? We'll judge what we think is the best slogan and that person will win <laughs> these parts. So, so yeah, get your thinking caps on, write it down below. <laughs>
Okay, so we're properly freestyling this video now. We just on the spot came up with a competition and Tati Bikes have just said they've got a little giveaway going as well. So if you go and join their Instagram, follow them on Instagram, where they will be announcing they're giving away two tickets to an upcoming event called VADFest, which I will be attending. It's gonna be awesome. So head to Tati Bikes Instagram, they'll announce the competition, get entered, and you can win a couple of tickets. So I think on that note, now that we've shown you how to do a hoe, we've announced a couple of giveaways. We're gonna end the video there. So thanks so much for showing me how to do this, Adam. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Hope this was educational. I uh, hope it was what you wanted. Hope you have an amazing week and I'll catch you next time. I do have a competition video coming that was maybe gonna be this week's, but I'm away from home. I don't have time to edit it. So maybe that'll be next week's. Either way, catch you then. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.